The following content contains spoilers, so please be advised. You can leave now. Or stay, because I will spoil the shit out of this. I'm telling you, I will spoil it. Soon comes the night. Interesting title, to put it in great perspective. About an interesting film about uh, a former freedom fighter post the apartheid regime in South Africa who ends up becoming uh, a, a modern day Robin Hood of some sort where he steals from the rich and gives to the poor and along the way along the journey his uh, journey or his vision or his mission becomes diluted with uh, pride and ego and he sort of loses the mission itself, sort of spilling the bloods of uh, the innocent in a way. And the story at, at first glance is promising, but sadly it's all bark and no bite. Uh, it, I really had high hopes for this. It, it started off really well and I was like, oh my God, this, oh my God, I just got him. Bloody text on my phone. Let me put this on silent so this shit doesn't happen again. All right. Anyway, sorry about that. So the story itself sounds starts off compelling, but it's got amateuristic aspects to it. So this is my review to that. First things first, What what's the most amateuristic I could think of? The robberies themselves, the heists. At first glance, they say this seems like it was done by well-tactical, well-drilled, Mm, tax force of some sort that did the robberies and then they show the robbery and it's the most amateuristic thing i've ever seen in my entire life it seems almost casual i get it the budgets and whatnot they did the robbery in broad daylight i would expect there to be a larger spectacle but then again this is an early 2000 so if this was now i would expect to see a lot of people with cameras but that's not it the story is dated in early 2000 post apartheid so you're not gonna see a lot of people in the streets so i'll, I'll give them that because once the guns start flying people usually tend to run away this is the olden times this is where the boers and, and the whatnot the apartheid regime basically controlled south africa and there was still remnants of that but this whole story itself is about a freedom fighter who feels he didn't get what he deserved after all the struggle he did. After the work he put in towards uh, ascertaining or getting his nation what they wanted, what they needed. And he achieved freedom for his nation. Mandela got out of prison. And they, they, they got out of the rat race to box and he thought that people would get what they deserved. Certain members of the struggle got political positions of high positions and he and his soldiers, the ones on the front lines, got next to nothing but crumbs. And he was furious about that. But instead of going to the newspapers like anybody else would, this man uh, delivers what he feels like the people deserved. He felt like the people were abandoned with the struggle. The the ministers and whatnot, they got rich and they stuffed their pockets and they forgot about the society. So he was basically fulfilling the promises that this party, that his former supervisors, his former bosses fulfilled. They will look after the people once they got into power. So how does he do that? He robs trucks. He, he steals vegetable trucks and he gives to the people. He becomes Robin Hood. He robs money and he tends it out. Which is uncalled for and unseen. And he becomes some sort of martyr to the neighborhood. This man walks in plain sight. No one snitches on him. No one does anything on him. Because he does a lot for the community. And how does his downfall come about? Through the eyes of a jealous woman. This woman he's, he's, he's intertwined with is jealous because this man does not love him. The way that she feels he loves him. Maybe he treats her by telling her that she's, you know, she's up for sale. Everybody's up for sale, he said. So she does the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. A woman's scorn should be world. So let's look at it this let's look at it this way. You are a girl and this guy does not love you. You know this. He loves somebody else. You know this. You're with him. He gives you money. He gives you jewelry. He gives you all the shit you want. Now you have two choices. Option one is you take the money and you shut the fuck up. Option two is you take the money 
and you stay. But this girl decides to do none of those two options. She decides to snitch on this nigga out of hatred, out of score, and out of bitterness. And, and by, in a sense, putting her life in danger in a way. But fortunately to her, this Alex fella is not interested in killing women, which is an admirable trait for him by my calculations, by my expectations, which makes the story more compelling. I feel like the story missed an edge. The story needed to be directed, needed to be written with, I feel like maybe the budget. Something was missing to make it grand. Maybe the actors, maybe the writing. It just felt characteristic. It wasn't believable at certain points. It's an apartheid time, post apartheid time. There's still police officers. I expect to see a little bit of racism. It's five years after Mandela took the seat, the seat man. But then again, the Rugby World Cup and all that, people are more calmer and more collective. The seat is more happy. I understand that bit. So, I don't know. And the worst part is, this guy is walking in plain sight. Remember, he's hiding in plain sight. He's not really hiding, is he? He's, this guy is doing, he's doing rain, uh, donuts on the, on, on the tarmac. And he's firing at the sky with a gun. Like boom, 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 boom. Everybody sees this guy. That's Alex Shabani right there. Somebody arrest this fucker. No one does. You know why? Because he's helping out the community. So he's a lot safer in the community. There's even a scene where the police try to, you know, interrogate or ask people questions. No one saw anything. No one heard anything. Nobody even seen this nigga. But they saw him. Because he's helping them out. They appreciate him. He's a hero. So, but I feel like the journalism in this didn't do much to work. Yes, the minister admitted that he trained this man. And oddly enough, they knew where he was. They knew where this guy lived. They knew. Now, when they uh, issue a task force to arrest this nigga, they act like they don't know where this nigga is. But the minister knows where he is. He knows where this guy lives. One of the guys showed up at this guy's house and offered him a deal. This guy was still at his house when they were looking for him. But they were looking for him. At first, I was like, maybe they, 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 they can't really prove that he did it. They know he did it. Because the minister knew who did it, but didn't have really evidence to say. Inst instead, he started naming. Remember, the minister came to the police with the name of who to suspect. The police didn't investigate and come up with the name. He did. I guess he wanted them to gather evidence. So they gathered evidence. Did the evidence get this man arrested? No. And I feel like Moscow fella was the most... Everything fell to crumbs for the Alex Syndicate or whatever they call themselves. As soon as that Moscow fella left and started stopped participating. That's when the little kid died. That's when that robbery went to Shazam or Shams, not Shazam. I don't know why I'm saying Shazam. So, all in all, Alex was the leader. Moscow was the brains. That other guy and the kid, they were the muscle. They did the work that they were supposed to do. They listened to orders. Seemed like a world old machine. And I find it odd that or police, yes, there's justice and whatnot. The story is really compelling. If you look at it, like this guy who's being hunted by the police is the same guy that that helped this female detective in, in terms of he killed the father, the man who killed her father. So he's the avenger of her father. She later finds this out and still tries to hunt this man. This is the intertwining story that's well written and also poorly executed. I feel like they rushed through some scenes. They didn't give us much more detail on certain scenes. Like the girl who was jealous. Her jealousy stemmed from that this man doesn't love her. We get it. And the girl that he loves, her hatred is the man that he became towards him. Not her hatred, her disappointment. That's the right word. She's sort of disappointed of who he has become. 
He was a freedom fighter. Now he's stealing cars. He's robbing banks. He's doing things that are harming the wrong people. And at first glance, he tells him, stop stealing cars. And he listens. But when he's about to listen, the police show up. Which might beg the question, who tipped off the police? I don't know. Then he goes to jail. And they don't explain more into detail how he got out of jail or he got away. I don't even know. There's a lot of time skipping in this. This guy was born a freedom fighter. He stole bread as a young man. And this guy is great and all. He's a freedom fighter. But I don't think he is in the sense that the guy he robs the truck from, he gets into trouble. Why did you stop? He probably loses his job because some junkyard kid stole his truck with full of bread and burnt it. He gets into trouble. He might even lose his job. But no one cares about that. But this is based off true events, I'm assuming. I didn't actually read much into it. I'm assuming it's based off true events. This really had the promise. For me, it had the promise to be some great. It just failed. Just failed at a certain aspect. But I, what I like about it, it's not too Hollywood-esque, if you might say. But I feel like the robberies themselves, they were poorly executed. That for me, I feel like even the direction of the director, they didn't want to dwell too much on the robberies. I feel like maybe they didn't want to dwell too much on them because perhaps they knew that they couldn't execute them to a level of, oh, to a level of brilliance. So maybe they dialed down on them for that sole reason. Now, if you take away the robbery incident and you just focus on them winning and coming with the money and whatnot, it's a compelling story. So it's a story with a few hiccups, by my personal opinion. The story that could have been great, maybe if Netflix offered more money, maybe if they had a better director, maybe a better writer. I feel like it's not a writing aspect. I feel like it's a directional. I think the story itself could be well written. Could be. Directing, for me, has issues. Like, if you take the story the way it is, maybe change a few scenarios there and there, enrich them. It's the scenes, for me. It's the scenes. The story itself is great. The story is interesting. It doesn't really force me to watch episode after episode. The first few episodes, I was, I was furious. I was enraged. I was disappointed. But... I succumbed to it. Took me two days to watch this. Now it's six episodes, 43 minutes. It shouldn't take me two days, but they just couldn't bear the torture, the pain of watching this. Maybe if they had better actors. I don't. But if Alex Vela seemed a pretty good actor, I've never seen him act anywhere else. But he seemed decent. He seemed too American to me, though. He was, he got, he got that coup uh, d'etat, that vibe. Of course, he was in exile, so I'm assuming he learned other things while he was in exile. It doesn't really say where he was in exile. I think they said they were in Angola at one point, whatever. So, I did not enjoy it. But I wasn't bored completely. So, uh, two stars out of five. Uh, one star on the directing pool. Uh, so I have to round this off. If I was to give it on each category, the directing of the film, I'd give it one star. The writing, I'd give it a 2.5. The execution in terms of the acting and whatnot. Sometimes the story could be crap. The directing could be crap, but the actor carries the story. I feel like this Alex fella carried the story. He did his job very well. And this Stucky, uh, the Rain Man uh, detective, the white chubby guy, he's a strange character. Very strange. I get the whole story is sort of dived into his character. He, he, he was behind a police cover-up. His son died because of the stress he was having, so it displays why the way he is reserved, conservative, reframed, and all that. So, I like that. And I like the whole character development on his terms that he was reserved, and towards the end, he warmed up to this young lady. So, 
uh, and the whole police station sort of banded together. So the story in itself has growth. It's, I, 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 story itself, the police station starts off as huge animosity. The captain doesn't respect the the certain detectives. Certain detectives don't respect this other detective who seems to be the seniority detective. Maybe he's the one who's been working the most in the station. So it seems like no one respects him. And But towards the end, they all respect him. This young lady shows up and it seems like no one respects him at first. Glance. They think she's probably fucking the minister or somebody. But towards the end, they respect her. And uh, the father, uh, Alex's father, in the beginning, he doesn't appreciate the way his son has lived his life. Towards the end, he's more accommodating. He pretty much saves his son's life by turning him into the police. And his son seems okay with it. Uh, the beginning, his girlfriend, his lover, uh, it, towards the end, sort of embraces him and loves him and even lets him know who the father is and whatnot. It's a really nice story in that sense. So there is character development, but I feel like it, a certain element is missing. The the whole ministry. But what crimes did the ministry commit, really? I still don't get why he was so compelled into this. Like, look at it this way. This guy used to work for you. He's disappointed, but you failed to do certain things. So you take initiative to sort of clean your hands. But instead of remaining in the shadows, you come to the limelight. And admit, I trained this nigga. I made this nigga who he is. You claim that. And the public knows this. That this guy is a freedom fighter. Everybody knows him. He used to work with you. He used to be a colleague. He used to work under you. Everybody knows this. And I feel like this Alex Fell also failed an opportunity to do a press conference. Like, the 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 the, the, the kid played by Sumizi's kid, the reporter. I thought they had a chemistry there. I thought he was going to fuck her at one point. But he didn't. She seemed to be more infatuated by this Alex Fella. There's nothing wrong with that. Her involvement... Her involvement, yes, she wrote a few articles, but I would have loved to know what she wrote. Overall, this is a great story. Yeah, uh, I started off with uh, on a negative aspect of it, but overall, I sort of enjoyed it. I have no grievances with it. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in the terms of how it was executed. I feel like it had room for development, room for improvement before they started filming it. Mm, I feel like uh, the community needed to be more involved. Uh, in a way, like, um, how is it that every time they pull off these robberies, there isn't traffic? That's very questionable. And what kind of police vehicle travels without an escort? I mean, a, a money vehicle travels without an escort. Seems odd. I mean, like, if the first robbery takes place, shouldn't you have at least a, an escort? I don't know. Of course, the initial robbery, a couple of guys get killed. They do a decoy of some sort, and then they sort of almost kill these niggas. And an innocent man gets killed. So, overall, nah. It's, it's a decent story, so I don't know if I should say anything further on that. Yeah, so go watch it. I uh, hope you enjoy it like I enjoyed it. Now that was entertaining. Please let us hang out yet another time. Remember to like and subscribe. Adios, folks. Adios.